Hi crafters, I have got two fantastic new techniques for you combining your heat embossing with your embossing folders. Now I've discovered this technique completely by accident and then I took it a step further to discover the second technique. I think you're going to absolutely love it and the results are gorgeous. As always, all the products I'm using are linked down below and a thumbs up and a subscribe would be fantastic. Let's get on with these techniques. So to do this technique, so what you're going to need is an embossing folder. Now I've chosen to use the same one for both of the techniques. You can use any, but I would suggest you use one with some nice bold detail on it. If you've got anything too fine, you might not get the effect that you're looking for, but definitely try out all the different folders you've got with this. You're going to need a couple of mats. I've got a water resistant one here and I've got a heat resistant one as well, but of course you could use just the heat resistant one for both. Some plain white cardstock. Now this is just smooth white cardstock it's not too heavy weight it's about 220 gsm you don't want it too heavy because you actually want the card to bend as it goes through the embossing machine and i'll explain why when we get to that stage and then we also need some inks so i've got my versamark which is my embossing ink i've got distress ink i've got versify and claire just as examples to show you then i've got my embossing powders i'm going to do one method with clear and one with silver i'm going with the wow brand for both and a heat gun. Now obviously you're also going to need a die cutting machine with the ability to change your plates or embossing folders to go through. So first things first we need to move our embossing folder out the way and we need to focus on adding some clear or coloured embossing powder to one of these panels. So let's start with the clear embossing powder. Now I'm going to cover my panel of cardstock and I would say usually do this a little bit larger than what you're going to use on your project because you want to have a little bit of area around the outside maybe to grip with your fingers or your tweezers. Um, maybe you want to cut down to kind of include the part of the pattern that you love the most. So just covering over here as best I can. Obviously it's a clear ink, embossing ink, so you're not going to see it, but do the best you can. Once you put your powder on and melt it, you're easily going to be able to see exactly where you have and haven't put that. Now I'm also going to bring in a scrap piece of cardstock. This is just for me to put my powder onto and then pop it back into the tub. So this makes life a little easier and a little less messy. So there, I've just covered that whole panel with clear embossing powder. Always put your lid back on. If you don't do that straight away, you will knock it over. So now my heat resistant mat is just going to go underneath my panel of cardstock here just to protect the surface underneath. That means I haven't got to hold my cardstock either while I melt the powder. Once that's all thoroughly melted, you'll be able to see you've got an entire glossy surface. And I'm going to repeat this process again to add another layer of powder. This is really important. I have tried this technique with just one layer and it's definitely achievable but better with two so i'm going to go back over all of my embossing make sure the embossing is cooled and dry before you do this i'm going to go back over with my embossing ink it's much easier the second time round because you're sliding on that glossy embossing powder rather than it's just soaking straight into the paper apply your powder again put the lid on again and heat set now it's really important to allow this to cool thoroughly you want it really cold I mean even pop it in the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes I tend to in the winter go and put this against the glass which is what I've been doing while I've been practicing just to cool this down as quickly as possible so uh, give that a moment you don't want to run this through your embossing folder while it's still warm at all okay so completely cooled down that means the uh, powder the embossing has completely hardened as well now i'm going to pop it into my chosen embossing folder like i say definitely experiment with different types of folders but i really love this one this is from my textures floral folk art collection and it's just got a really beautiful bold design so i'm now going to run this through my die cutting machine I'm going to actually run this through with more pressure than usual so for that I've popped in a thin metal shim now you can pad out your sandwich in any way you want to my usual sandwich for embossing folders in my big shot is my large base plate the teal thin plate a rubber mat the folder with the cardstock in in this case our embossed cardstock and then we've got a clear plate on top but I've just slot in that metal shim between 
the embossing folder and the top plate and this is just going to give it an additional little bit of extra pressure what we're actually looking for here is for the design to crack around where it embosses and debosses we want that cracking to go around the design so this is why i'm adding extra pressure which is often what will make this happen anyway and go really slowly and you can probably hear little cracks going on there so that's perfect that's what we want so now just pulling this out of the fold it, initially you won't see that anything's happened it will just look like a beautiful glossy piece of embossed paper or cardstock which is lovely and you can of course use that on your projects if you don't have any glossy cardstock but you'd like some but I'm going to take this to the next level and make it look like it's antiqued metal like it's rusted in places and that's just with some distress ink now you may be thinking well hang on distress ink is never going to stick to embossing powder it's never going to hold on to anything glossy and no it usually wouldn't so let me show you what happens here I'm going to cover the piece with the brown ink and you can absolutely use um, oxides a different ki kind of ink if you want to I'm going to then spritz this with water all over and just give that a moment to settle and do its thing now you can go in if you want to with something like a blending brush or a foam and just move the ink and everything around and what you're going to see happening is around the edges of the design you've got the cracked embossing and this is allowing the color to then seep into the paper underneath which is beautiful okay so now I just need to take myself a piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to wipe away all the excess and as you can see I'm left with this lovely colour just gently around the design so that now looks like it's aged metal I mean how cool is that it looks like old painted tin that's been exposed to the elements for too many years now this is with it watered down so you can see quite a lot has come up now I also did this with the dry ink without watering it down and I actually got a very similar effect so it's entirely up to you which way you go now if we have a look here you can see where that ink has seeped through the embossing in places through the cardstock that is so beautiful like I say if you like vintage looks doesn't it just look like an old piece of metal that's got the rust around the design now let's take this a step further and move on to technique number two now in exactly the same way as I did with the clear embossing powder I am covering covering a panel of the same type of cardstock just a white smooth cardstock that's usually what I use for stamping onto or ink blending onto and I'm covering it with clear embossing ink and silver embossing powder and again I'm going to do two layers of this one this is the perfect time for me to ask you really nicely if you like this video you're enjoying it please do make sure you are subscribed to my channel and make sure you hit that little bell icon so that you get a notification every time there's a new upload from me okay now popping this back into whichever embossing folder we want so I'm going to go back into the same one just so that we can see the difference from the last technique that we did I'm going to run this back through my machine now this time you don't need quite as much pressure you don't have to put that additional shim in um, because we're not looking to crack the embossing okay so there we've just got a beautifully embossed panel now this time we're going to add ink to it again but we're going to add a black ink so I'm going to go with VersaFine Claire now this can be any colour ink you wish because the technique will still work I'm just going to brush it over the surface and you might be thinking oh, I've seen this before what usually happens though when people add this over the surface of their embossing and it may be on mirror card or something like that so what usually happens is they have to use a stays on ink or an ink that's going to dry on the surface or they go ahead and they cover it up with something else that will seal it in well, we're not going to do this now if we left this this ink wouldn't dry on this surface it would sit there it would always be rubbing off on your project on your hands on the recipient's hands uh, it's never going to dry thoroughly 
so I've just darkened that I've got this beautiful tarnished metal look again old metal with the black there I've got ink on my fingers as well but never mind that's part of the course but what I'm going to do now is reheat this panel so I'm going to bring back in my mat and I'm going to warm up the embossing powder until it remelts now what's going to happen is the embossing powder is going to remelt and this does take a little bit longer this time than it did the first time to melt because you are remelting it and it's going to kind of encapsulate that ink into the powder and then it won't rub away So I've melted that powder or remelted that powder and I've set that ink into the powder. Now if I take myself a wet wipe and brush that all over the surface, it's not coming off. That is now embedded in there. You can use that on your project. And just here I actually used a dark, I used much more ink, and as you can see, it held on absolutely beautifully. Now, just a word of warning though, the thicker your embossing, the more these ink particles are going to kind of sink into the melted embossing powder when you heat it up a second time. This was one layer, this is two layers, and obviously, if you go for even more layers, the ink's going to sink into that melted embossing even more so you will lose the definition a bit more but it's a lovely way of picking out areas without having that residue on the surface that could buff off onto other projects so there's two different techniques for you creating a metal look using embossing and embossing i hope you've enjoyed this if you do please don't forget as i say to subscribe like share the video hit the notification icon and also take a look at this video here because i think you'll really like this one too take care everybody i'll see you again soon